Hello, and welcome to this film, which is the ninth and possibly final film in the series about uh, standard level energetics. Here we're going to look at um, a purely mathematical method of doing Hess's law calculations. So that is to say we're not going to use the cycles that we covered in the last film, but we should end up with exactly the same answers. Okay, as I've said before, this method uses uh, involves, I think, a little bit less understanding of what's actually going on. And if you're a higher level student, you should definitely aim to be able to do the cycles. But if you're a standard level student, this one is often good enough by itself. So hopefully by the end of this film, you'll be able to manipulate equations, so that is to turn them round if need be, and use their enthalpy changes to calculate the enthalpy changes of other reactions. And as I say, we're going to do this without the cycles. So as a quick reminder of how we did this before, um, we said that if you added equations with known enthalpy changes, you might end up with the same kind of equation that you've got that you need to calculate an enthalpy change for. Um, you might find that if you add the, well, in fact, you would find that if you add these two equations, you remember the E's and the F's are going to cancel. We'll be left with exactly the same equation we've got here. So we can just add delta H1 and delta H2 to find this unknown enthalpy change. But again, I'm not, uh, that was supposed to be quite a quick reminder. It actually went on for a bit longer than I thought it would. Um, go back to the seventh film if you need a reminder of it. Anyway, I'm going to use the same examples I've used in the film about the cycles just to show that we get the same answers. Okay, um, And you might even decide that this is a slightly simpler method. But as I say, in the high level course, you actually have to be able to construct the cycles. But without wanting to labour that point too much, let's uh, carry on. Now, here is our reaction whose enthalpy change we don't know. Okay, what we want to make sure we've got from the other two equations is the same substances on the left and right hand side of the arrow. So we've got carbon and oxygen on the left, carbon monoxide on the right. This equation has carbon and oxygen on the left, it's got carbon dioxide on the right. This carbon dioxide isn't involved in this equation at all, so it doesn't really matter what side it's on. But we'll leave this one the same way around because it's got carbon and oxygen on the correct side. This one's got carbon monoxide on the left, whereas it should be on the right. And it's got carbon dioxide again, and it's also got oxygen on the left, which is what we want, but really we want the carbon monoxides on the right. So we're going to reverse this equation here, and we're going to write it out again, and we'll go, oops, just rub that out. We've got carbon monoxide and a half O2 on the right-hand side. If we do that, then we've got a new enthalpy change that is going to be exactly the same size as this one, but it's going to have a different sign. So um, two, instead of minus 283 kilojoules per mole, 283 kilojoules per mole. Now then, let's cross this equation out because we're not going to use it, and let's add together, so delta H question mark, we're going to add together delta H1 and delta H3. And let's see what happens if we do that. We'll end up with an equation that has C plus O2 from this equation here, plus the CO2 from this equation. That's everything on the left-hand side of the arrow. So now let's go over to the right-hand side. We've got CO2 plus CO plus a half O2. Can we cancel anything? Yes, we can cancel the CO2s. What else can we cancel? We can also cancel this half O2 with half of this 1O2, so I'm left with a half O2 here. And if I've done it right, I should end up with exactly the same equation as this. And yes, indeed I have. Okay, so adding those two equations means I can add their enthalpy changes, and just like before, I end up with minus 110 kilojoules per mole. Okay, let's go on to the slightly more complex example. And this was the one involving PCL5 and PCL3. Again, in my unknown equation here, right, I've got PCL5 on the left, PCL3 on the right, and chlorine on the right. Here I've got PCL5 on the left, which is good. I've got P4, which isn't involved in this equation, and Cl2 is on the right, which is good. So I'm going to leave this one the same way around. In this one here, P4 is not involved. Cl2 is on the left, which isn't great, but remember they might cancel out with these Cl2 is on the right. And... PCL3 on the right, which is definitely a good thing. So I'm going to leave this equation the same way around. Now let's add these two equations, right? 
we'll go 4PCL5 plus P4 plus 6Cl2s turning into, right, because now I've done everything on the left of the arrows, let's do the things on the right, P4 plus 10Cl2 plus 4PCL3. Okay, let's see what cancels the P4s and the 6Cl2s cancel with 6 of them, so I'm left with 4Cl2. Now notice here, what is this? This equation here looks very much like that equation, but it's four times greater than that equation. So in other words, delta H question mark, that's not a very good delta, delta H question mark is equal to delta H1 plus delta H2, but just like we saw with the cycle, we've got to divide this lot by 4 because delta H1 plus delta H2 is four times as great as delta H question mark, so we divide it by 4, and again we end up with exactly the same answer which we decided was 249.8 kilojoules per mole. And what you might also notice here is the way that the things that are cancelling, these chlorines in particular, they were the things that we had to add to one corner or another in the, in the cycle process. But anyway, once again we're getting the same answer using this what I'm going to call the standard level mathematical method um, for Hess's law calculations, Okay, even though both methods really are mathematical. Okay, that's the end of that one and hopefully um, you understand how we can manipulate equations with known enthalpy changes to find enthalpy changes for other chemical reactions. So that was the the maths method that didn't involve cycles. If you've got any questions about it or any comments at all then please feel free to come and see me or to uh, post a comment on YouTube.